Hello and welcome to another AIC Cars video. So this is going on my AIC Cars channel. I only have like 512 subs. I would love to build this channel back up again. It's been a while since I've posted anything on here, but we're gonna be doing some work on my 1998 Mazda B4000 slash Ford Ranger truck. Uh, I've had this truck not quite five years and it has been an amazing truck, but it's time for a little bit of maintenance. So let's go ahead and go over some of the things that I need to do to it. So, I wrote it down here. So one of the things I need to do is rotate the tires. So you can see that uh, they're wearing badly. The ones in the back are perfectly flat. So I'm gonna rotate the tires. Uh, well, one of the reasons why they're rotate, wearing poorly is the ball joints are bad. I'm also gonna uh, install some new wheel bearings. Um, I did this a while ago. I have a video on my channel about it. But I'm going to do it again because when I did it, they leaked pretty bad and they're all crusty and nasty. And so I'm going to see if I can do a better job of sealing them up, sealing them up, so they don't get uh, nasty. I also have wheel bearing grease. Um, I just used like a general purpose grease last time, and I don't think it's the right thing. I'm going to replace my brake pads and rotors. So there's still plenty of life left on the ones I have, but my rotors have warped pretty bad. And this is the second time I've warped rotors. I'll show you what I got to go on this time. I'm going to do the U-joints in the rear drive shaft. It needs an oil change pretty bad. I think I'm overdue by like 2,000 miles because I've actually had two unexpected trips very close together. And so I haven't had a chance to change the oil change or change the oil. Uh, vacuum line leaks. So when I'm at idle, the AC comes out of the vents as normal. But when I go to accelerate, it goes through the defrost vent. And so it, and when I stop again and idle again, it goes back to the normal vent. So I have a vacuum leak in there. Um, I need to clean the interior up pretty good. Um, I use this truck when I'm doing gross things like going to the dump, working, you know, digging up dirt, things like that. So the interior has gotten pretty gross. Took my son camping, it was just dusty, dirty. After I do the ball joints and everything, it should have an alignment, so we're doing that. And my backup camera quit working. When I say I quit working, I actually smashed the one that was working. I put a spare on there that I thought would work and it's not working. So I have another spare that I bought years ago that's just been sitting on a shelf. So I'm gonna see if this second spare works. Um, hopefully I don't have to buy a whole new setup. So this is my list. Let's look at some of the parts I got. So, ooh, it's bright out there. It's only 91 today. It's hot, <laughs> but it's supposed to be in a couple more days hitting triple digits. So I wanna get this done ASAP. So I've got my uh, hub assemblies here for the wheel bearing, uh, got backup camera. This one I didn't wanna use because they have lights on it, but I don't think it's that big a deal. Got my new U-joints. Hopefully this check valve will fix my problem with the um, vacuum line, have its new ball joints. And I got drilled and slotted rotors because I'm hoping that by having drilled and slotted rotors, they're less likely to warp. No idea if that'll be the case or not, but since I've gone through two sets of Brembo rotors that keep warping on me, I wanted to try something else. So that's what we're going to do. So there's my parts. There's my brake, new brake pads. Um, let's, uh, let's get at it before it gets too hot. All right, so I'm just starting the process and we're just doing a quick moving tires from the front to the back right now. These back ones, which is this one right here, is not gonna go onto the truck just yet. Um, but I'm gonna put the ones that were on the front on the back. So that way that part's just done. And I just wanna show the difference between the two. So these, all the lugs are nice and evenly worn. There is not a height difference between the trailing edge of one and the leading edge of the other. If we go to the front tire, you can see that there is a massive, I don't know how well that shows up in the camera, but the height difference between the trailing edge and the leading edge is immense, immense difference. Um, especially like right here. So that indicates an, a severe issue with your alignment and or suspension components. As I said, I'm pretty aware of issues with my ball joints. Um, so that's why they're getting replaced. But yeah, if you ever see this, this is too far gone. 
I meant to do this oh, quite a while ago. They're also a little overinflated as well. But um, as I said, I had a couple emergency family things and I had to travel out of town and deal with them and just haven't had the time. And plus I've been trying to get my Jeep fixed. So lots of reasons why I didn't get this done, but now it's getting done. So also rotate your tires every 3000 miles. They'll last a heck of a lot longer. And I didn't do that. That's on me. All right. And on to the next part. All right, and we are on to the next step. And I have had these rugged ridge uh, locking hubs for a little while now. Man, I love these things. These were, these were one of the best things I've done for my truck because uh, I never have to worry about it. It does mean an extra step when I go off-roading of getting out and make sure I lock these. But a lot of times if I know I'm going off-roading, I just lock them ahead of time because then it's just a live axle and then I can just turn on four-wheel drive in the cab. Um, now, I just took this off, but um, it, it's really easy. Oh, no, I can't get it off. Uh, to get these off, um, I think in a previous video, I did like a thing with a bunch of, um, whatchamacallit, like wire, and that's not necessary. You just need to get a really skinny screwdriver and lift up the tabs then you get another screwdriver and just whatever tab you lift up, just push forward just a tiny bit, like literally the length of a hair. And then you turn it and do the next one, turn it, do the next one. And that lifts it up enough to where you can just pull it off. And it took like two seconds to get that off. Well, probably more like 20 seconds, but not much time to get that off. Um, and then we're on to getting this uh, bearing unit off. So we're going to get the bearing unit off. We're going to get the... Um, at that point, what I'm actually gonna do is look at the vacuum system here. The, I was gonna do the ball joints, but I'm gonna wait on the ball joints. Once I get this off, um, I'm gonna take all this liner out because what I need to look at is behind here. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this all at once is so that I can um, take this wheel liner out and deal with um, the vacuum lines that are all pinned behind it. So yeah, that will be step number next. Uh, but this is going apart really easy. Uh, things are looking great. So you see, I did put some grease in here. This again, these I'm not, I don't need to replace these. I just have new ones, so I'm gonna do it. They they seem to be all right, but oh well, whatever. Still gonna do it. All right, see you in the next part. All right, so as you can see, we got the inner fender liner off, and I've been up here looking at these vacuum lines. So starting over here. This is the vacuum canister. I think what's gone bad is the check valve that's in here. Might even be a crack, I can't even really see it. Um, here. So this line comes along and it's split here to go into the vacuum system for the four wheel drive system. And you can see a previous repair attempt here. What I did is I just took this off. I'm gonna take these lines off entirely because I'm using manual hubs, I don't need any of this anymore. And I put in a check valve. Now, I just started the vehicle, let it run for a minute and revved it up pretty hard, as hard as I felt comfortable doing it on the lit, on the jack stands. Uh, and a couple things I noticed. Number one, normally it takes a long time just idling in the driveway for it to switch from vents excuse me, the defrost vents to just the blowing at you vents. I don't know if they have an official name. Um, so that normally takes quite a while to do the switch over uh, when you first start it. It almost immediately happened. And when I revved, I didn't notice any decrease in air coming out of the vents pointing at you. So obviously I don't know if this is a permanent fix until I get it on the ground, but I've checked the lines multiple times and I do not feel any kind of break. There's no sound of hissing or other issues coming from them. Uh, it's this gray line, it comes up. Here it is, uh, sorry. So this line comes from the engine and goes into the bottle here. And then this line comes out and it's a thicker line that splits between, uh, or sp did split between the four wheel drive system. And then this black line comes up and over and it's just drooped over right here down into the um, HVAC system. And then this black line comes out and it controls, uh, not black line, sorry, the gray line comes out and it controls the solenoid for the hot water. So 
uh, for the heater. So that is a different line. My heat works just fine, so that's not uh, a problem there. So anywho, we're gonna get the zip tied up into place and we'll put the fender liner back and then we will get to work on these ball joints. I'll jack up this uh, A-arm just a little bit, get a jack stand underneath it so it doesn't fall and we'll get these uh, ball joints uh, taken care of. All right, so I have started to work on the ball joints, but I ran into a fairly major problem. I have my own ball joint puller set or press that I've had for quite a while uh, that works great on my Cherokee XJ, but none of these work to pull that one or that one. So I'm going to have to go borrow a ball joint uh, puller from um, wherever, probably uh, AutoZone. I'll do that first thing tomorrow morning. It's getting kind of late today. So I'm going to go ahead and tear apart the other side. Normally I do one side and then the other, but in that sense of saving time, getting as much done today so I can be ready for tomorrow, I start pulling apart this side. And I just got looking at this rotor and oh my goodness, I have no idea what that is, but that could be part of the reason why I have such poor braking performance is there's something wrong with this pad. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm not seeing anything too obvious other than this back end has a ton of powder on it. Oh, it's just ugly. It's just not pretty at all. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that one of these is rubbing against that rotor or something. I don't know. It's it's ugly. It's it's nasty. So, um, glad I'm taking care of this now. I have to figure out what exactly is causing the problem. But we'll get that fixed and uh, taken care of. So, that is that. And hopefully no more vibrate breaks. All right, so I grabbed a camera person, small, petite, eight and a half years old, almost nine, and who is holding the camera for me. So move it a little bit closer up here so you see what the screwdriver does. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting the up just a little bit like that, and that's just enough. You see how there's a little bit of gap there, and I twist, and then I turn, and I pop, and I've done all of them, I think. I go through around. I have one more, a couple more over on this side. And then you want to be gentle because you don't want to break these plastic tabs. Can you actually see what I'm doing? All right, I think that's it. And it just pops right off. Easy as that. Um, you don't need the special Ford tool to get these off. All right, thank you. All right, so we're back at it. This is actually the next morning. Um, putting this side back together, finally got the ball joint off. So I had to go to AutoZone and pick up this set right here, 27166. It had the correct accessories I needed. Um, I already had a ball joint press, but it wasn't sufficient. Didn't have the right, um, right parts. I'll show those to you here. And this is the one you need to get off the ball joint, uh, number 21, excuse me, 27166E. And to get it back on is 27166F. And this one, which is C. So you need those to get it back on these two this goes on top this goes on the bottom to press it in and this is what you need to press it out so i haven't started on this side yet uh, i did get everything taken apart last night except for i didn't knock it off of the bolt and i forgot that that took a few whacks with the hammer and it is only 6 30. i don't want my neighbors to hate me <laughs> so i'm going to put the other side together um, and then I'll come work on this side when it's a little bit later in the morning and I'm not wailing on a piece of metal at 6.30 in the morning. I always forget how early it is because it's so bright outside, you know, now that it's summer. So, anywho, one tip I'm going to make, if you haven't done the, um, uh, I, I want to call them bearings, but they're not bearings because they're a whole unit, um, but these hubs, when you go to start these bolts, start every one, there's three of them, 
a little bit at a time. If you snug one down, you'll never get the other ones in, ever. You have to get it threaded just enough that it's threaded and then to do the other two. And then tighten this one a little bit, then this one a little bit, then that one a little bit, and then go back around this a little bit, that one a little bit. Because if you don't do that, you will get this in there cockeyed and you will either bend or break a bolt or strip a thread or something. Uh, do, them, do them as evenly as you can when getting it in there. Uh, that's a pro tip uh, that I learned the first time I did this. Uh, now this is the second time I'm doing this, or third time actually, because I've taken it off before to inspect them, but uh, yeah, go around, do them one at a time. Um, this ring is a pain in the butt, but it is an absolute literal lifesaver. Uh, I found out on the other side that actually a couple of the, these bolts had come loose. Um, I must have not snugged them down last time I was in here working, and that's kind of some of the causes of some of my problems. So it's my own damn fault. Um, but uh, that literally kept those bolts in place. So even though that's a pain to work around, a literal lifesaver. Anyways, I'm gonna get this side on and then hopefully it'll be late enough I can uh, work on the other So I'm gonna get this side all 100% done, show you what it looks like, and then we'll work on the other side. Oh, and don't forget the snap ring. It's uh, the only thing that holds the axle into here. Don't forget it. All right, so that is one side done. Now I didn't do the upper ball joint because um, you actually just replaced the whole control arm. Uh, this is where a little bit of research comes into play that I didn't do and I bought the wrong thing for here. I must have bought one for a different year even though it said it was compatible. So um, these are not replaceable. I have to replace the whole, whole arm. But uh, the bottoms one, bottom ones were the worst. There's basically just flippy floppy they're trash um so I'll, I'll replace these at a later date at this point but for now um this side's done so now i get to go hammer on the other side and hopefully not wake up too many neighbors hopefully they're already awake all right so i'm taking off the other side now and you can see how this is set up that just goes right around the back side of the um ball joint and that just sits right on top and we just tighten it and it will eventually pop out. Um, I'm not doing a full video on this. Chris Fix has a Mazda B3000, which is I think the couple years newer than mine. And so he has a much more in depth video on this process. I'll link it down below if I remember. But yeah, pretty simple. Um, you definitely need a ball joint press to do this job though. All right, let's get this sucker out of here. All right, there it is, pressed out. Now what we're gonna do is take this apart. We're going to clean this surface. I have a, just a brass brush and some brake clean. And then we, I'll show you what it looks like when you go to install it. All right, we're ready to press in the new ball joint. It is in here. Um, the threaded part is sticking through here um, and then this cap and you just tighten it till you can't really tighten it anymore uh, it's kind of hard to tell when I did the other side I took it off a couple times because I'm like oh I'm done and no there was still more had to be tightened down so yeah well, let's get this side on all right so I'm putting this side back together and as I'm doing that I uh, just want to mention don't forget to transfer this o-ring from your old hubs over. Um, since I've gone to manual hubs, I don't know how important this O-ring is, uh, but especially if you have vacuum hubs, it's probably pretty important. So make sure you transfer this over. I am, even though I'm with manual hubs, just because uh, it should keep out moisture and, key, and it definitely makes a difference with the hub and as far as how tight it feels on here. So um, yeah, uh, don't forget that, uh, that O-ring. I almost did, so I'm glad I didn't. All right, so we're finishing up on these wheels. Got everything back together. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just going around. And one thing I like to do is just wherever I've been working, wave this magnet around. Now I purposely left stuff to pick up, but 
uh, there's always pieces of metal, um, whether it be a broken cotter pin, I don't know what that is, or these rings, whatever. I just like to make sure when I go to put my tires back on the ground that I'm not gonna get a flat um, uh, immediately. Uh, that has happened to me before. Uh, I left a screw down, you, know, you oftentimes replace screws or whatever, and so I left a screw down and it almost immediately punctured my tire. Uh, as you can see, with that being a little wet, I just ran some new brake fluid through there on both sides. Just some, um, I didn't do anything other than just stuck out some of the old stuff, put in some new stuff and let it just drip through till it ran clear. Uh, and it should be some fresher brake fluid on both sides. So now we're gonna work on the U-joint in on the main drive shaft. So let's get to that. All right, so I have finished doing the rear drive shaft. I didn't do a video of it because Chris Hicks has a better video and I'll just link his. Um, but they actually don't look too bad. I was hearing a click going from drive to reverse and I was hoping it, it was an easy fix with a U-joint. And it doesn't look like these are too bad. So I don't think it was this. So I might have to look for another culprit. But these are at least done now and I won't have to worry about these for quite some time. So let's go through and see what I've done. So I've rotated the tires, kind of did that first. I did the lower ball joint, so I'll cross that off. Uh, wheel bearings, brakes and rotors, U-joints. Um, I did the vacuum leak, and I fixed the backup camera. So that was just literally plugging in the new one. Um, I'm not gonna do the alignment because I need to do the upper ball joint. Uh, I don't have time to clean the interior, and the oil change will wait till next week. So uh, I feel like it's been a pretty successful um, day of working on the truck. I would have been done a lot sooner except for, like I said, I had to rent the uh, ball joint puller from uh, AutoZone. So uh, that, that definitely took several hours out of my time because I had to shower, change, go there, come back. It was too late by the time I came back. Anyways, so yeah, looking good and uh, get this uh, thrown away and on to the next project. Anyways, don't know if you found this video entertaining or helpful at all. Uh, usually you guys don't, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Anyways, uh, but thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.